Hello, uh, today is July 2nd, 2018. I'm Roger Veer, the CEO of Bitcoin.com. But uh, today I want to tell you about my, uh, a couple of things today, but uh, I want to tell you about my own story about being uh, tortured in federal prison in the United States. And I think I've told some people this face to face, but uh, I've been meaning to write about it and, and put it down to words. But uh, I've certainly never made a, a video about it today. And there were a couple of things that came together um, that made me motivated to, to do it today. So one of those things is that uh, Ross Ulbricht, uh, the person accused of starting the Silk Road, uh, has now been in federal prison in the United States for about five years. That's a long time. Um, think about how old you are today and then subtract five years from that and imagine if you'd been in prison that entire time, how much of your life would have slipped away uh, because of that. And the thing that's making me uh, motivated to record this video today is there's another person uh, by the name of Gary Davis, who's an Irish person, been living in Ireland his whole life, never ever been to the United States, who's accused of being the moderator on the forum to discuss things about the Silk Road. And uh, the United States government uh, is extraditing him from Ireland. So he's gonna go from Ireland to a country that he's never been to in his entire life. And he's looking at life in prison for being the moderator of a forum that allowed people to discuss things on the internet. Uh, and as someone who spent some time in federal prison, I understand just uh, how terrifying it must be for Gary and uh, how terrifying it is for, for anybody in that sort of situation. And I, I guess I'm, I'm making this video because I want more people around the world to know about the sort of things that go on in federal prisons in the United States. And uh, for those that don't know, uh, I did 10 months in, in federal prison from 2002 into, to, until 2003 for selling firecrackers on eBay back when eBay had a guns and ammo section and it wasn't a, a big deal to, to do that at all. Um, and in fact, the real reason that uh, I actually went to prison is because I was busy saying things like the things that I'm going to say in this video. And uh, politicians don't like it when you speak truth to power. And uh, that's too bad. The truth is more important than what the politicians like. And uh, the truth is more important than, than being popular with a bunch of politicians or anything like that. So, uh, so uh, anyhow, this video, I guess, is uh, dedicated to all the people that are held in federal prison or state prison or any prison around the world, for that matter, for victimless crimes. And there's a lot of them. Don't underestimate just how many of them there are at this point. So uh, I have quite a few stories I could tell, but I, I guess the one that I'll, I'll tell is uh, when I first showed up uh, at prison, I was allowed to choose when I would start my prison sentence. So the, the judge said, you know, how much time do you need to get your affairs in order? And uh, it's been more than a decade now, so I don't remember, maybe it was 30 or 45 days or it was some, some number of days. And so I had to lay off most of my employees at my business and get everything set up so that uh, I could go to prison. And uh, I made the mistake of uh, choosing to start my prison sentence on a Friday. Uh, don't ever start your prison sentence on a Friday and certainly don't do it uh, on a Friday before a national holiday. And I, I think it was right before Memorial Day or Labor Day or something like that. And uh, showed up on a Friday, Friday morning there at uh, Lompoc, uh, near Santa Barbara, California, for those that are familiar with the area. And the way it works is they have to classify your security level at the prison. And anybody that knows me knows that I'm a pretty white collar kind of guy. But uh, my actual charge uh, was dealing in explosives without a license. And it's worth pointing out that the, the criminal act isn't the selling of explosives. And these are firecrackers I bought on one website and sold on another. And the crime isn't selling the explosives, it's doing it without the license. So it's simply just not getting a permission slip to sell the, the, the firecrackers. Um, and anybody, if you want to, uh, I'll put a link in the description. You can read about the exact product I was selling. Uh, they were sold by Cabela's Sporting Goods Catalog. It was sold by a bunch of other resellers on eBay. People all over the country were selling it. Uh, the manufacturer manufactured over a million of the units. I sold a few thousand of them. Uh, the manufacturer basically was just told to stop selling them. Nobody had to pay a fine or, or, or go to jail, except for me, because I spoke truth to power. Uh, taxation is theft. The draft is the moral equivalent of kidnapping and slavery. And war is mass murder, funded by theft. Um, so that's the truth. Uh, if you don't like it, 
sorry, the, the, the truth doesn't bend to whether or not we like it being the truth or not. So uh, anyhow, showed up uh, at federal prison there uh, and they were waiting to classify me. So when they haven't classified you yet, they send you to the highest security level that they have within the prison. So it's called the SHU, which S-H-U, which stands for Special Housing Unit, which is just a euphemism for the jail within jail. So they sent me to the jail within jail there, which was a little, little tiny room with three bunk beds. So six people total and a, a toilet and a shower with no privacy or door or anything at all around the toilet or the shower. So like absolutely no, no privacy whatsoever. And so little ventilation that everybody just basically strips down to their underwear and lays in their bunk because it's so hot in there just from everybody's body heat and the lack of ventilation in there. So I was there all day Friday, um, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Uh, normally you're allowed out for one hour a day, but uh, it's on weekdays, I believe. And then uh, Monday was a national holiday, so I didn't get out on Monday either. So I was in there for four or five days straight and my entire world was, you know, felt like it was, it was already felt like it was being turned upside down, but my, my attorney representing me, the prosecuting U.S. attorney, the judge, everybody assured me that I would be going to what's called a federal prison camp where uh, there would just be a line on the ground that you're not supposed to go uh, past. And they assured me that it'd be just like going to summer camp, but you'll be there with a bunch of doctors, lawyers, and drug dealers. And as a kid, I loved summer camp. So, and I didn't really believe them that it would be just like summer camp, but, uh, I didn't think I was going to be locked in a little tiny cell 24 hours a day for the first four or five days straight with, uh, you know, five other people that I didn't know at all and absolutely no privacy, even for the restroom, uh, at all. So anyhow, I was there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I got out for an hour to go in the little, maybe, I don't know, eight feet by eight feet or six feet by six feet, little cyclone fence where you can get a little bit of fresh air and a little bit of sunlight. I was out in that for one hour and then went back. And then uh, I think it was on Wednesday they finally got around to classifying where I would go within uh, the prison. And they let me out of the, the, the jail within the jail. And they sent me to the prison laundry to get my prison clothes. And the prison clothes are like a khaki shirt and some khaki pants with a belt that's made out of like a, the life, life vest clicker, like plastic clips that you would imagine from a life vest on a boat for the belt. And then they gave me some big, giant, clunky uh, work boots that who knows how many people had worn those uh, boots before me. They had definitely seen uh, better days. And then from the prison laundry, after I'd you know, changed into all the, those clothes, which were different, I, I should back up a little bit too. So when I was in the jail, within the jail, they just slide your food in on a tray through a slot in the door three times a day. Uh, and then when you're done eating it, you slide it back out. And anytime anybody's gonna come or go out of the room there, you have to put your hands behind your back and slide them through this through the, the slot in the door and they handcuff every single person in the room before they even open or close the door to let anybody in or out of that room, uh, which was really crazy and uh, I guess degrading, but lots of people that have never been to prison, they think, oh, well, that's the whole point, you know, treat people badly in prison. But uh, the real, the real punishment about going to prison is being separated from every single person you know in life, being completely separated from all of your family, all of your friends, from everybody you know, and being thrust into a place where you don't know anybody, and you're completely cut off from every single person you've ever known in your life. That's the real punishment from going to prison. But anyhow, so they give me the, the shirt and the pants and the boots, and then they tell me to go and see the, the prison counselor. And I... Uh, it's not a counselor. It's just uh, it's just another guard, and the, the 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 prison counselor's job is to give you your bunk assignment. So they they tell me to go from the prison laundry to the prison counselor, which is I don't know fifty yards away or something. Not not very far at all. So I I walk from the laundry to the to see the counselor, and I go in the room they specifically told me to go into the room, and uh, you know I it, it it had taken quite a while for me to you know come to terms that I was going to do 10 months in federal prison. And that seemed like absolute uh, eternity. Uh, but it was certainly better than the seven or eight years that they had threatened me with if I didn't sign the plea agreement. Um, so when you're looking at seven or eight years versus 10 months, of course, 10 months is better than seven or eight years. Um, and felt like an absolute eternity. Uh, I was uh, 22 years old. 10 months feels like uh, forever. And, and it was definitely the longest 10 months of my life, even looking back on it, uh, more than 15 years later. Um, but uh, 
I walk into the uh, the counselor's office that they, they told me to walk into. And as soon as I walk in, um, the one guard that's in there, he jumps up and starts shouting at me. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't come just walking in here like this. We have to search you first. Put your hands on the wall. Put your hands on the wall. We're going to, we, we need to search you first. And the, the other guard is just watching him. And the, even the other guard looks surprised by this guy's reaction when I, I came into the room. By, but like, there's two guards, right? One guard says, you put your hands on the wall. We have to search you. The other guard's kind of looking at him. And the one guard, you know, I put my, I turn around and put my hands on the wall and he starts patting me down. And as he's patting me down, I'm pretty sure that, that I can see something in his hand, but I'm not sure what it is. And, and I'm not in a position to make demands of anybody at that point. I'm a prisoner in a federal prison, but I, I can see there's something in his hand as he's patting me down. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And then when he gets down to the, the, these boots that I've only had on for like two minutes and walked maybe 50 yards in, the big, giant, clunky work boots, um, he pulls out this, you know, big shank, uh, sharpened screwdriver. And he starts screaming at me about how, you know, you're coming in here with a shank. Are you trying to shank somebody? You're going to do more time for this. And I'm telling him, it's not mine. It's not mine. I don't know where it came from. And he's screaming and yelling at me about how I have this shank and how, and he starts telling me that I'm going to do an additional two years in federal prison and 10 months already felt like forever. I had already had a really, really rough five days being in the jail within jail. And I didn't really know what the, the overall jail experience was gonna be. And he's planted a shank on me and screaming at me about how I'm gonna do an additional two years in prison for having this shank that he put on me. And I'm telling him it's not mine, it's not mine. And like 10 months felt like forever going from 10 months, I'm only five days in and already having a rough time. And I think I'm going to go from 10 months to two years in 10 months because either this guy planted a shank on me or it was already in the boots that I had just received from the laundry a few minutes ago anyhow. And I'm telling him, it's not mine. It's not mine. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. And he's screaming at me about how I'm going to do an additional two years in prison. And of course, understandably, you know, I start to cry and the tears start running down my face because I think I'm going to be separated from my family for an additional two years on top of the 10 months that I had already barely come to grips with that I was going to have to do. And when he sees that enough tears are coming down my face and that I'm crying enough, he pats me on the shoulder. He goes, relax. I'm just kidding with you. Have a seat. And so that man just purely tortured me for his own amusement. And the guard, the other guard sat there and watched the whole thing. And I don't know exactly what went through the head of the other guard, but, uh, at that time, I got assigned to a, to a bunk in a big giant warehouse size room with, I don't know, a couple hundred other people in there that's so loud from all the, it's like tile floor and concrete walls and the sound really echoes around in there and it's like really, really difficult to sleep. And, uh, you know, of course, no privacy there at all either. Um, so they assigned me to the bunk there and I, you know, didn't hear anything more uh, at that time. But then maybe after I'd only been in the, jail maybe three weeks or so um they called me back to the counselor's office and uh it was at this time it was just the one guard that had watched the other guard torture me and bring me to tears thinking that i'm gonna do an additional two years in prison because he planted a shank on me um it was just you know purely did that for his own amusement but the other guard was there and he told me you have a new bunk assignment um and you know i'm still pretty new to the whole place i don't know what that means but uh he assigned me to uh there's a lot of jokes in prison, but uh, they, they call it the private suite. Um, it's not really a private suite and it's not nearly as nice as it sounds, but that's, everybody has to be an optimist in prison. So there's all sorts of things that uh, people are optimistic about at prison. And there's like lists that go around the prison of uh, things to be optimistic about in prison. Like the top, top, I think it was a top 100 list of things that, the good things about being in prison. and. Some of them, you know, if you can have a good attitude are, are kind of funny. So like an example of some of these things on the list about the, the best things about being in prison is you don't have to worry about what you're going to cook for dinner. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat for dinner, right? Because you're, you're told when you're going to eat and what you're going to eat. You don't have any choice in it. Uh, you, don't have to wor you don't have to worry about what bills to pay or any bills to pay. Uh, you don't have to worry about what to buy people for Christmas. Uh, you don't have to worry about all sorts of things, which... Uh, if you can have a good sense of humor, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, so I guess people need to be optimistic or, or have a bright attitude when they're in such a bad place uh, where the food is 
so horrible and uh, everything is not uh, not so good to put it mildly. But uh, anyhow, I got assigned to this other room that instead of having a couple hundred people in there and it's so loud, you have to wear earplugs all the time. I was assigned uh, to a room that only had uh, four bunk beds and uh, only eight people in it, which was a million times better than the great big giant room that I had been in. But it caused other problems because other people thought, wait a minute, Roger's only been here for a couple of weeks. How did he get assigned to that bunk? Whereas usually you have to be there for years before you get assigned to such a good bunk assignment. And so some people were worried, you know, is it because I'm, you know, a rat or an arc or something like that? Or, you know, what, what did I do to, to get that? And I don't know. Um, but what my suspicion is, you know, here more than 15 years later, I suspect that the one guard watched the other guard torture me and bring me to tears over lying to me thinking that I'm going to get an additional two years in prison. I think the one guard that watched all that happen, I, I think he felt a little bit bad for me. And I think he assigned me to that bunk just because he felt bad because the other guard had tortured me. But he didn't say or and I didn't ask. And you're not really in a position to ask anybody about anything. Um, and uh, I guess a lot of people also have this misconception that uh, well, aren't you scared of, of the other prisoners in prison? You know, don't, didn't you have to worry about it? And like, maybe some people you know, have to watch out for a little bit, but you know, 98%, 99% of what you have to worry about in prison aren't other, it's not other prisoners, it's the guards. Because uh, the guards are there day after day after day, year after year after year, and a lot of them are really, really bored. Some of them maybe were nice people, um, to begin with, maybe some of them still are nice people, but others are there just because uh, they like treating people badly. And uh, it's the guards that you have to be worried about in, in prison. It's not so much the other prisoners. And there's guards that uh, their entire day is spent harassing the prisoners that are there and giving them a hard time about all sorts of different things. And uh, maybe I'll tell some more stories about that sort of thing in the future, but uh, I guess I'm glad I made the, the one video talking about how a guard literally planted a shank on me and lied to me claiming that I was going to get two years additional prison time. And they can lie, but the guards can lie about whatever they want for whatever reason they want. And nobody's going to believe the prisoners. People will believe the guards. But uh, I was there firsthand. I saw it. This is the truth. Uh, I guess I should tell another story. So while I was there... Uh, there were two times that uh, the federal inspectors came to inspect the federal prison to make sure that the prisoners were being treated properly. And on those two days, those were the two days that had uh, by far, not just a little bit, by far, by far, by far, by far, the best food in the, uh, in the entire time I was there in the, in the chow hall there, like way better food than normal. And uh, in the bathrooms there, there's like, you know, soap dispensers and paper towel dispensers that the entire time I was there, never once did they have any soap or paper towels in them, except for the day that the federal prison uh, uh, inspectors came. Uh, on that particular day, wow, there was actually soap in the soap dispensers. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And there were paper towels in the paper towel dispensers. That was amazing as well. Um, and the other side of it, two people don't realize, like, you can't tell that, hey, you, like you can't tell the federal prison inspectors, hey, they're just putting on a show for you. The prison's never like this normally. Uh, because if you complain about anything, uh, the guards will really let you have it. They'll send you to solitary confinement. They'll send you to the jail. Within the jail, they'll give you another thing. There's another thing called diesel therapy. And you're probably thinking, what the heck is diesel therapy? What diesel therapy is, is where they ship you from prison to prison to prison to prison on a bus. And you ride on this bus across, they zigzag you across the country and you're handcuffed and chained to a seat on a bus. And you live on this bus for days or weeks or even months on end as they ship you around the country because they don't like whatever you complained about or whatever it is that you caused trouble for them. And they, you literally live on a bus for weeks or even months on end and that's diesel therapy. And if you complain, they'll do that sort of thing to you. So you can't really complain about anything. You can't tell anybody about anything because they'll make your life even worse. Um, so anyhow, that's, uh, part of my prison torture story of having been tortured in prison. And, uh, I'm sure Ross Ulbricht has had some bad experience with some guards. And, uh, I think Gary Davis, uh, this Irish guy, and 
is also going to have some some bad experience with guards. But uh, part of why I wanted to tell this, and I, I don't know if the world uh, knew this or not. We weren't super public about it, but uh, we had hired Gary to help with our customer support and forum stuff and you know dealing with customers at Bitcoin.com. And uh, he's been working with us at Bitcoin.com for quite a while now, maybe a year or two, maybe even more. Um, I'd have to check exactly when he started, but he's been a fantastic uh, team member and a fantastic friend and just an all around great guy. And now he's looking at life in prison in the United States, a country he's never been to, never had anything to do with uh, for simply helping moderate a forum on the internet uh, that maybe talked about things that the U.S. thinks is illegal, but it's a forum, a discussion forum where people talked about things. Uh, so anyhow, I just wanted to display my uh, absolute, complete and utter disgust with the federal American federal injustice system. And you know what? Maybe the federal injustice system of the United States is better than some other countries, but uh, they're all pretty damn bad in my book. So, uh, and I'm not interested in participating about it. And, uh, I'll have part two of this video. I'll, I'll tell you guys uh, in part two about why I'm just so fed up with uh, the United States police in general and why I think the police uh, in just about every country, in the United States specifically, are much worse than your normal common criminal. And I uh, look forward to part two. Maybe I'll make that video this afternoon or another day very soon. So uh, if you like this content, uh, post it on your own sh social media, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, spread the word because uh, that's all we can do. Uh, the government people have all the guns and, and the power for now, but uh, that's changing. Um, but that's all we can do. So keep spreading the truth. Thank you guys for listening. I, I hope you found it interesting and uh, tell a friend. Thank you.